before you start doing any of your plumbing stuff, it's a good idea to go over the client where they want everything going, and then to come up with a drawing. Now it doesn't have to be a scale drawing, a scale drawing is overkill, but it is handy to have the scale, it all to scale, because you can check whether things will fit, whether when you open the door will it smack into something else. If I was fitting units along here, which was an option, you know, with the cupboard door, catch on the toilet pan, you can check all of that when you put all your appliances into scale. This whole thing is a 1 to 20 scale drawing. But the main reason to have a drawing is because you can give one to the client, keep one yourself, and then everyone's on the same page. There is no confusion, there's no doubt, there's no, oh, I thought the toilet was going a bit more to the left or something, and you then got to cough up extra time and expense just to move a toilet just because you didn't, you know, take that precaution. Everybody having a copy means there is no doubt. Now, in a smaller bathroom, it doesn't matter so much because, you know, there's only so many places you can put the loo and the bath and stuff, you know, due to the restrictions of the room. But on a larger room, it does become more important, especially when you uh, start making check if the client wants to make a change, which is fine, you know, as long as they understand, you know, you're not going to do it for free, especially if all the pipes and stuff are already in. Um, you know, if they start making changes, they say, what if we move the bidet to the left? You can show them on this without actually having to do it, you know, and find out the hard way that if you move the bidet to the left, then it'll hit into something else, for example. Or if we move the basin further over, you wouldn't be able to get into the shower door or something like that, you know. Because you know what they're like. They'll always change their minds as sure as the sun will come up in the morning. But at least with this, you can troubleshoot their, their issue and see if there is a way to do it, if there, if it's feasible. And if they can see on this that it's not going to fit, then you'll avoid it. You you know you might not have to do it. But if they can't see it and they can't be persuaded, and especially if they don't like drawings, then you, know, you might be in for a problem. But that's the nature of the beast. So yeah. But once you know where everything's going, and more importantly the client does, then and only then do you start running your pipes. Now that now that we know where everything is going to go, we can begin to plan our waste pipe design. Now you can see by the window there the soil pipe that I have been working on. I've made the new soil connector into it to the toilet. Below that is the old waste boss in the iron part, uh, part of the pipe that's left. Now I've made, a two, made in a two inch piece of pipe into that boss sealing it up in there with silicon. I didn't get to film that sadly, but it is what it is. Now, the way that I've decided to do it is I'm going to run a two inch piece of two inch pipe, the white piece that you can see in the picture, directly forward towards, and that is going towards where the shower tray will be, and I'll terminate the, that pipe where it goes into the drain for the shower. And then all the other appliances can be teed into it. We're installing a basin, bidet and bath. The basin is going on that grey part of the wall on the right, and so I won't have to drill through very many joists. The bidet is going to the left of the soil there by the window, and that will have to be well, that will involve cutting about two joists, I think. And the bath I can use the notches that are already existing for the inch and a half waist going across there. So that's the way I've decided to do it, and I think it's the way that it will cause the least trouble and the least hassle, because I've used what's already there, or I've drilled through the least amount of joists possible, which I think is the best way on a situation like this. And then later on, we can start to think about filling in some of these notches. Now, it's important that you think about where you're running your waste pipe, because you may not necessarily be able to do what you what the client wants in a new build house especially because there's only so much you can cut away and so much that you can notch you can only notch an eighth of the joist away which on a nine inch joist isn't too bad and you can drill a hole clean through the middle a quarter of the to joist's total width All right
And the thing about this is that this is star system. And if you buy the older blades, you've got to watch out because they won't fit this. Let's make a rough guesstimate of where we've got to cut. I'd say about there. Be on the safe side. And remember, you can always cut, but you can't put it back. Needs to come down a bit more. That's good, that'll get it roughly to where it needs to be. I'm a bit concerned about this dimension, how it's pointing inward. And apart from that, it's okay. This can be tilted down. None of this is glued. You don't glue till you're ready. I think that depth should give it enough ball where it's not got to do anything silly. I'll bring it this way a bit. It's catching on here. I might have to take that off. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. I'll take some more of this off and then that should do it. You can see where somebody's done some of the cutting for me. There we go. It's very nice, very flat, with a slight ball. It's about what we want. And we could even clip it here now. It should be good. I'm quite pleased with that. I need a measurement now. The thickness of the um, width of the tray and where the drain is. And then I can make a decision about putting this in, really because this is what I'm chiefly worried about, the run to the tray and whether I should take some more off just to get it a bit further round and try and work out whether I've got to go through any of these joists and that really. So I want it so I can cut my T in here and have it basically facing the middle of the joist. I'll get to that in a minute. But now what I've done for my second hole, second and final hole, because then the pipe will be coming up about in line with this. So I'll have, you know, I'll be able to clip it up along here. I've measured off, measured what this hole is, drawn my line straight up on the middle. And that's about 60 mil. So I've used this plank as my constant because it's, you know, something to measure off really. I could have measured off that wall, but this wall's a bit higgledy piggledy or something else I could have done. Um, 
that's the way I chose to do it. I could have, if this wasn't here, I could have put a plank across the um, stack and made sure it was at right angles to this. And then that would have given me a constant all the way down here because the stack's quite fixed in a constant place and I could have done it that way. So there's a few different ways to do it. But make sure that you're measuring constantly off of something or else you'll go to thread the pipe through and it'll, the hole will be over there somewhere. You know, it won't be in line. And the depth, you've got to vary a little bit so you have fall on the pipe. And then you just drill through. There we go. Wants to come a little bit to the right. A little bit more. There. There she goes. Alright, that'll do me nicely. bits over um, flat bits because they pull themselves in but I ain't got any inch and a quarter of flat quad bits or else I'll be using them Don't touch this with your bare hands because it'll be hot. I was trying to avoid ripping a nasty hole like that, but I won't. Life's doing well. All right, that's given us a little bit of wiggle room in our hole hole here. Let's cut ourselves. Let's measure that. Just guesstimate it. Not going to be too accurate at this point. You can always cut it away a bit more afterward. Right. That is 600 or thereabouts. I'll show you these. So we measure no, 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 600 and then just like a pipe slice, let me put this away. 
Ah. Well, you would have cut it just like a pipe splice, but this is an inch and a, inch and a half. Shit. Ugh. What the hell is it saying on this place? Uh, Well, I should have checked that earlier. Oh well, that's a rookie mistake. Right, straight out of the gate. First rookie mistake today. We drew an inch and a quarter hole for the inch and a quarter waist, yeah? No problem. However, inch and a quarter is an internal diameter. So there's a nice interference fit with our waste pipe today. So, we're going to get round that problem. I can just hear my boss now saying, you know, oh, it's an external, an internal diameter. I should have known better, but you know what it's like on a Sunday, you know, all, all hope and reason goes out the window. But that won't stop us from having some fun, eh? And it gets, it's a nice example to show you of how to unfuck yourself without, you know, having to get the flat bit and kind of use the force and go, you know, and drill it and shake about. Do it properly. Of course, you could use a hole saw, but my drill don't take hole saw. Not yet, anyway. That's another video in itself where I convert my right angle drill to a half inch chuck. So what we're going to do meantime, we're going to get the area ready and then we're going to do a bit of cleaning. Da, 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 da. Yeah, lovely. Thank you very much. Oh, I'll put it in my bag for the next time I mess up. Well, they'll probably push straight through and they won't be ripped up. They'll just sort of give you the guide to the start. Yeah, body. So you've drilled your hole the wrong size. You need to make sure you have a piece of wood like such, made by my assistant, that fits snugly in here and that'll help you center the drill. Of course it is a bit haphazard because you might have to hold said piece of wood while it centers. No. It's perfect, look. There you are. Voila. No, 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 no. I lost it again. Spike that on the end. And that is the correct way to resize a hole. So now your inch and a quarter pipe can actually go through Lovely jubbly. Lovely jubbly. I don't know what happened to the plug. I think it flew out. Yeah. And so you have it again for another day. And I'm going to put these two in my tool bag for the next time I do this. So there you have it, everyone. And just to prove it works, I'll do it another time just to show you. And basically, the idea behind this is that if you just did this without this block of wood, you'd be wobbling all over the place and you wouldn't be able to center the thing properly. So it always helps to have a guide. Now, what I was saying before, before we started rolling, is that if I had been using hole saws, if I had a half inch chuck, I would have already had the piece of wood from the hole saw, if I got it out whole, to use for this purpose. So there's more food for thought. So in another video I'm going to show you, I'm going to convert this Ryobi right angle here from a 10mm to a half inch chuck and we can use our hole saws and never have this problem again. Lovely. Well, you want to drill them more for drilling than for screwing. Like you try and screw and it's just so fast that it slips.
what I'm trying to do. There we go, that's painless. Perfect. The elbow dry, set my pitch on it, so to Can speak. You get your cutter in when it's screwed in the right bit. Oh, yeah, get the cutter in any way I want. Yeah, it is. I mean, I mean, look at it. I could cut it if even if it was up against yeah, the joist. Okay. Like when it's out here, it'll be a joke. But yeah, all right, what was I doing? I was going to measure rather than just cut by eye and waste all the pipe. No, I got my thumb. Yeah, Alright everybody, gonna see these. Oh, yeah. Thank you. See these in action. Oh bloody hell, this strap is rubbish. It's really uncomfortable. You get a really good video with it, like you can see first person, but Christ. There you go, and it's as easy as that. The sky's the limit. What? So if the sky's the limit, we can... Well, the only trouble is you can't go straight into it. You have to put... Is it right angle? That must slope on it. Mm. Yeah, I reckon that'd be fine. You don't need a lower form on it. No, not really. Alright, let's mark this well, up. What I'm saying is, if you come off that vertically, James... Huh? If you come vertically off that pipe, straight up, yeah. It'll be sloping backwards. It does happen. Does it? Yeah. Can't I just make it up? Because it's coming like that, when you want to come in like that, so it's that middle. Hmm. But don't put too much force, you've got to spring it. Hmm. Yeah. Well, that's about right where it is now, isn't it? I mean, it's not going to be that dirt bad, is it? Now carry all the hair and bits away. <laughs> you're about to glue that's an old trick I've learned otherwise it's the glues going off and it's like oh my god where is it all right let's do it like this lovely mm-hmm it's obligatory gets me through the day good whiff of glue Sniff before bed. Mm. All right. Then what we gotta do. Make sure you're ready and that you're steady. Because once this goes off, that's it. No, 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 I don't need two and a half inch eights just to hold pipe clips. Right everyone, we're back in the bathroom. We're going to be doing soldering today at a nice slow pace and I'll show you my magic 360 degree, you know, round the corner torch that I've been using. And uh, I'm quite pleased with it. I've already done this bit, obviously. And it's pretty good. And uh, yeah, we're getting the upstands in for first fix. And obviously you've got to have the copper coming out of the floor, you know, higher than the finished appliance.
Okay. Let's get sheeted up and I'll show you this lot. Always make sure that you're not, you know, gonna set fire to any electrical cables, any, you know, wood that might be around while you're working. It might, it's very rare, I know, when you're soldering under a floor to encounter this strange substance called wood, but it has been known to be used in building from time to time. And I'm not really near those cables enough where I'm going to shit myself, so we're good. I'll demonstrate this. Now, I did have a little bit of a mess up with this because this doesn't light very well. You know, how I've repaired it isn't the most foolproof. So we'll see if we can light it with that. If not, we've got the venerable electric. I've got a new electric cartridge for the zipper. The Z Plus is history, that paraffin thing or butane or whatever it is. Let's just see if we can get it to light with the lighter. Hey! Not good. Oh my god. I can get it in. No, I can't. Stand it like that. Oh shit. And yeah, it's just a bit more versatile being able to point the end in whatever direction you want, really. Starting to run. It's starting to run. There we go. Nice mucky, nasty solder. Yeah. Extra muck for extra points. Get the snot off the bottom. Fuck's sake. Turn this off. And the best bit is, you can stand it like that and it won't burn the carpet. How about that? Right. Always, always, always clean your flux off, especially with dirty, mucky water you found in the, in the plasterer's bucket. It's the best water to use. <laughs> we don't like leaving flux on pipes because it'll leak into it, even if it is self cleaning. Self cleaning my foot. If it's self cleaning, how come all the bloody fittings are all green when I come back to them? Burns away. And it's as easy as that. Obviously, if it was end feed, it'd be more critical, and I'd be like, oh god, I've got to get in here, I've got to get in there, I've got to get here, there, and everywhere. But for this sort of thing, well, especially on a Saturday, you know, it's your own job. You want to be able to take your leisurely time with it. <laughs> Every time. 
get right in there. Not that it's really necessary, but you can fold it in half, get it right in there. Come on. That's better. Starting to run. See the top started to work. Notice how the flame is now on rocket mode because I've turned the bottle upside down. Or maybe not. Don't know why then. Now right, let's get the snot off of it. As best we can. Smell all the burning fumes and shit. And uh, yeah.